Yeah, look at that. It's crazy. Oh, wow. Look at that. Oh, hey, Larry. What are you doing now? I'm browsing the dark web. It's a dark <laughs> web. I've heard of that, but I don't know what, what it is. Oh, funny you ask that. I just happen to have something right here that talks all about it. Introducing the dark web, or at least my notes upon it. So, uh, oh, down there, he's trying to give me production notes. So, today we're going to be talking about the dark web. We're, we're, going, we're, starting, we're turning on the lights right now. And, uh, today? Give us a few seconds. Today on the Red Couch Diaries, <laughs> we're going to be talking about the dark web. Oh, darn it, where did my glasses go? I just put them down. No? And I, I can't read my notes. Oh, okay, let's just do it anyway. I'm going to do it. I'm just going to sort of no, squint I, my I, eyes. I insist that you find okay. your glasses. Well, you can do that thing, but, you know, this it's is... Probably under your... Probably, but this is a very time-sensitive thing. We don't really have any... Well, let's start. Okay. Can you read your notes? Uh, I can read my notes. And so what we're going to do is we're going to talk about... Oh, there they are. The, um, have you ever heard of the terms clearnet and darknet? This darknet? Is the first I've heard the term darknet, but I, 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 I'm not clear on it. It's something that I certainly haven't been on, but okay. certainly something oh, that well, I'm maybe you on. have been, and um, we, we'll we'll go into that first. And so, in order to do that, we're going to back up to uh, the pre-internet days, and back then we had some we had BBSs, and BBSs started in the late '70s. You would be able to call up a Telephone, uh, a, a distant computer, and multiple people could be online at the same time. They'd put their phone in a they modem. They put their phone in a cradle or a modem or whatever mm -hmm. it was. And these are uh, different kinds of isolated networks. And so uh, AOL got its start uh, by being one that was for video games mm -hmm. and around 82, 83, before it was a general purpose online service. Uh, CompuServe was an earlier one that had the Prodigy was the one by Sears and... Uh, oh, Prodigy, yes. Right? And, all, and so uh, these were all sort of isolated networks that did their own thing. And along with that, you had uh, the white supremacists and the Nazis had their own. And that was really convenient for them because you couldn't put those things in the mail. That was illegal to have in the mail. Um, I did this last week is that I ended up putting it on the wrong side. Uh, and so... It, this uh, made them avoid all of the uh, restrictions so that they can get their messages out over, over the internet so in the 80s. So that was legal, but putting that stuff in the mail was not, but putting it on the phone is... Oh, well, no one was investigating. Sketchy. Right, exactly. Yeah. Right? And then if somebody is coming to get you, like you could just take the, take the computer and like throw it, yeah. throw it out the window or whatever, they, right? They wouldn't have known how to look on a computer. Exactly. Anyway, and the, so that was a place that, that people hid. Yeah. In order to do this, you know, you know, different kinds of uh, uh, white national terrorist cells and things like that. that that's what that's was organized. So um, then, around the early '90s came, and um, we the internet, the internet, which had been around since the 1960s or so, but really uh, since the early '80s, the modern internet. Yeah. Um, it was this much more open society, if you will, where um, you connect whether well, all networks together. And at that point, the BBSs were connecting, co uh, connecting together as well. And it has things uh, with names like FidoNet, um, the long dead, the, the UCPNet, um, uh, BBSNet. And so basically what would happen is that I would connect to one phone number, and then that, one, that, that machine would also be connected to another system over here. And so then I could get stuff from the other machine over there. And then that one would be connected to one over here, and over there, and over there, and, and you form this kind of network. And so using that, then uh, I would call a local number here, and then, and then it would sort of crisscross across, like the old long... Di well, like the old dial-up. Well, not only that, it, it depends on how old you are. Um, I, I know you like to be sort of secret about it. But back in the day, uh, when you tried to make a long-distance call, you could actually hear each of the exchanges going through, oh. and it would take uh, maybe a minute or so as you hear the different kinds of machinery yeah. as, they, as they go out along the network to, to get mm -hmm. to your final destination. And this is essentially what would happen. And so uh, you, that's how you would talk with somebody from New York to Los Angeles for uh, whatever the local, no, it might be, just be a local number for yeah. you, right? Um, 
So people were doing that in the early 90s before um, the, the web came around. So that, that's what that was. And then um, when the web came, that kind of killed it all. And uh, because now it was a, an open system and it wasn't hidden by phone numbers where only a few people knew about and you had to create an account and these uh, assistant men sitting here could kick you off or whatever it is, yes. you could basically go to a, a, a modern web browser or type, a go to search engine and then potentially find everything out there, which was great and also not so great because um, there were features of that secrecy that was a benefit to some people uh, for many reasons. Uh, for instance, banks would do it, and banks had their own networks, yeah. and that's, that's legitimate. The, the, the Defense Department, it has its own version of the Internet, and it still does, um, one that you can't have access to. It's a completely different set of protocols, yeah. and, and, and they're not connected to each other. Um, and so uh, th this introduced something called, the, uh, something called the Deep Web, which the earliest reference I found uh, talking to it is about 1998 or so. And that's different from what's known as the dark web. Uh, because in the, the, the deep web is basically um, some things you can't necessarily navigate to unless you log in or uh, go searching or whatever it is, right? And so um, you can't necessarily click on it. You have to do some typing in order to get to it. As opposed to, uh, so that's also called the invisible web. And then as opposed to the dark web, which is intentionally hidden services. So in 1997, they had something called the Dark Web Portal. And the idea is that you could use that in order to get to uh, things that people were trying to hide. And so f these days, it might be something like, oh, uh, because everything has been put on the internet, maybe the stoplight down the street or something like that. And you might be able to interface that over the web. Right. Uh, it, back in the day, maybe there was, a, as we said, like a BBS or a dial-up network, and then you'd have to dial into the stoplight in order to right. see it. But, but these days, everything's been converted. War over. games. War games. Right, exactly. Those old movies, right? And so um, now we're going to get to um, number three. And so we, we had this open internet in the early, in the, in the late 90s. And um, that was okay, but it was... There were a lot of privacy concerns. First of all, what would happen is you would type in your password, and it would then con connect and go across a bunch of different uh, servers that would all be able to see your password as you typed it in, right? And so if any of those were bad actors, or if somebody had figured out how to access that computer illicitly, then they could see all the traffic going through, right? And then take all of your account information and, and do sign terrible things with it, right? And so sign up to your thing so. and, and empty your bank accounts, right? It's awful. All right, so so that was uh, that's that's um, and then there's also a server-based um, uh, uh, security, which is basically like um, even though I'm accessing it, um, what if somebody comes in and removes the computers? Would they then ha know what I was accessing or what I put mm -hmm. on there, right? So sometimes it's, it's a full encryption where only I know about it. And even on the remote server, it's still compressed, or still encrypted. And so even if you stole the hard drives, you wouldn't be able to see it, anything. That's how passwords are stored, for instance. They're, they're not stored in a real thing. They're stored encrypted yeah. in something called a hash function. And um, a lot of the um, uh, servers, what, what they'll do is, is their actual, their, their customers' data, they all, those are going to be encrypted drives. So even if, you, even if you took the drives out, you couldn't actually inspect any of those people's things. So um, the, uh, where was I going to go with that one? So, so, yeah, so, so that's the kind of privacy. So this is just background information to understand where we're going to get to the next thing. So the next thing we have to t talk about is the centralized versus decentralized. So. Um, let's say that I have something that I want to be private. Um, and it's on a centralized server with all of these encrypted things. Well, that's okay as long as it's legal, right? And if it's illegal, then the FBI can still come in, mm -hmm. take, that, take the server thing out, you know, um, arrest the, the people that were accessing it, right? Yeah. And say, I, I know that you're on here. And now you have to give us the password because you know we have the long arm of the law on you, yeah. right? 
And we're going to force you to do that, right? So, so it's this other kind of um, restriction where they can, you know, it, it doesn't matter how, how good your security is if the other guy's got, you know, an iron bar to smash yeah. over your head, right? So um, the, the uh, other thing is you, you have something about liability and ownership. So um, what if, let's say, I was trading uh, copyrighted material on the server, right? The question is, is the person who owns the server or does the, does the actual stuff, are they liable for the copyrighted? Uh, it's an ongoing no, it's not. Dis discussion. No, no, it's not. Uh, it's, uh, 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 there, no, this has been decided yeah. in courts many times. And so uh, the, the famous ones are in, in uh, Napster in 2001 and Grokster in mm -hmm. 2005. There's something called oh. a secondary liability. I'm talking about Netflix now, uh, not Netflix, uh, Twitter now and Facebook now. No, the, yeah. the t Twitter and Facebook still are under the same mm -hmm. uh, findings of those lower court, of those yeah. earlier courts. And so the secondary liability is basic, or, or secondary infringement is mm -hmm. that, you know, is that I, if I was downloading it, I, am prime, I have the primary yeah. infringement. But then uh, the people that have the service, and this goes back to Sony Betamax, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> no, it does, decisions, is that, you know, uh, the other group may be encouraging you in order to do the infringement. And so they called it the inducement of crime, okay? And this became a big deal in 2012 with a guy named Kim.com, who had a mega uploads site, which was a site where you could just upload files. Yeah. And you know, he said, well, I don't know what's, what's on there. Uh, you know, I've got no idea. Um, but because he structured it like that, by its very nature, he's inducing the crime by saying, well, wink, wink, we're not going to keep any logs, right? Yeah. And, and so it's like, well, what, what are you expecting at that point, right? It's like saying, you know, uh, we're, we're, the, we're the bar, but we're not going to check any IDs. Well, of course, yeah. you're going to get kids walking in, right? Yeah. Um, so you have a responsibility. Uh -huh. So, uh, yeah, that guy went to jail for, for, the, for that, actually. Yeah. Big, big deal. Mm -hmm. And his site got shut down. So, this, so basically, um, even if you have a fully encrypted thing, and even if you don't know what's on there, mm. based on how... Uh, your users engage with the system, you're still held liable for it, yeah. potentially. So the way around that is through decentralized storage. And that really started out in um, essentially uh, with the advent of file sharing. And file sharing, uh, earlier on, it, you could do it through something called Net News, which was a version of, it was like email, but you could subscribe to news groups. And then people would post to these news groups, and um, basically any subscriber would be able to get down the information. And so what you could do then is that you could post files on those news groups. And that was a form of file sharing. And each of these news groups had a, um, it was a hierarchy system. And so you had like alt.music.indie.80s, right? And so you'd go down there, and people would be discussing it, but also sharing files. Yeah. Uh -huh. And they had everything that you could think of. Uh, from uh, religion to sports to adult content, which is what we're going to get at later, yeah. um, including every kind of adult content. Uh, so the so along with that, you had IRC, which was Internet Relay Chat. This goes back to the late '80s. It's the same kind of idea, very simple s system, wherein um, I would be able to chat with somebody online. And uh, there were various networks that were connected to each other in the same way that the BBSs were connected to each mm. other. But these, but these networks, uh, so for instance, um, Fnet is one of them, wasn't, necessar wasn't connected to another one called Undernet. They're independent. But all of the Undernet servers were connected to each other. All the Fnet servers were connected to each other. So when you log into Fnet, then you're on a network with all of the other people that are logged in at that moment in time. Um, and similar to the other things we talked about beforehand, if I decide to join a chat room, I don't have a scroll back history of what happened before I joined. Mm. Right? So um, I don't know the historical parts to it. Okay? And so um, they were also completely anonymous, or they still are. And so uh, I, if, the, if nobody on the network has the username Larry, then you could be Larry. Mm. Right? But if somebody happens to have it right now, then you can't be. But once they log off, you can take it. Oh, <laughs> right. Yeah. So it's it's uh, basically uh, I hold it while I'm logged in, 
and then I release it. And there's ways around that these days, but essentially that's the idea. Yeah. And so at that point, it becomes really anonymous because you see Larry and you don't necessarily know it's a Larry that you saw yesterday, but then you check the channels and you're like, oh yeah, this guy's in, you know, um, it's not the Larry, yeah. so you say it won't be the Larry you see tomorrow. Yeah, th th this guy's in the Dodgers channel, yeah. and he's named Larry. That's the that's probably the Larry I saw yesterday. Um, so these, so because anybody could create channels, and they were basically d destroyed when people left them, right? And this is very fluid. So I could create any channel topic that I want to, and then I could be an administrator. I can make a private. I could put a password behind. I can do whatever I wanted to. And then I could, I could exchange files there. So what kind of files do you think were being exchanged now? With a completely anonymous, sort of closed off network, you know, it could be completely secret and anybody can make them. Right, it's exactly what you think it is. Uh-huh. And that's, pr I believe that's still done today. I, I haven't, th this used to be the number one way that people would exchange music. Uh, or, or child and, porn. Well, no, just por pornography in general. Yeah. Because um, there was, uh, in, the, in the late 90s, right, um, it wasn't today. Like, you could just go to, I don't know, a porno tube mm -hmm. and get hours, endless, yeah. right? Um, everything was behind a paywall, or you'd have to prove you're 18, or whatever it is, right? And so if you were a, a high school kid and you just wanted to, you know, you, you, you didn't have Google Images, right? Yeah. And so this, this was a, a good place for you to, to get that. And, and of course, there'd be... Uh, it's, it's no rules, right? And then not only do they allow a, a, a high school kid to look at the content, but the, it's all any content that, that you know, yeah, they can, uh, can come up with. But um, if we go back to the other thing about the, the kinds of security, there is no security on here. Um, because even though, even though you're anonymous and you log in, they, still, they can still reveal um, what's called the IP address, which is a uniquely assigned address to you at a given time. And your ISP, and that's how the internet works. And so whenever I get out my phone, I have, I have uh, a traceable IP address whenever I contact anything. Mm. And if, as long as people keep uh, up-to-date logs with correct timestamps, and the, and the police get all the paperwork and all the warrants th you know, from all the uh, uh, connecting networks, and they can come back and they can say, aha, that was you that, that got that. Mm. You know, and so it's not, it's not s simple. So it's say the same each time? No. Every, so you sign off, you sign back on, you have a different IP address? Sometimes. Uh, sometimes not. Yeah. The, I mean, the, the, the cell networks are really weird because you could have one as you walk around and go from cell network to cell network. So it gets really complicated. But again, there's ways of determining all of this stuff. So on IRC, the problem is, is that all of this stuff is easily exposed. So you can say, oh, look, um, this channel is called child porn. Um, I can see these 85 users are in there. I bet you that they're all trading child porn. Let's get their IP yeah. addresses and then go bust them, right? Straightforward. Um, not only, but e even though um, you can't see the logs previously, the servers can. And these are still centralized servers somewhere, right? Yeah. And they're not encrypted. So. Um, e you could then walk in to uh, the, the server farm with all those racks, and you can say, hi, I'm the police, I am here to pick up that machine. You take it out of the wall, and then you look at all the logs, yeah. and you can do whatever you want. Triple bus. Happened a lot with the IRC, especially with these types of stuff. And not only, not only that, but, th that's, but this also goes back to the earlier thing with the BBSs, is that the white supremacists had their own IRC servers, where they would, and the terrorist groups, and whatever it is, right? Um, the, the, you know, the groups, uh, was it, uh, uh, the, uh, Timothy McVeigh was a big IRC user, and he did uh, a lot of chatting on the, uh, the white supremacists, mm. kind of like Stormfront style, things but Stormfront was around. Yeah. Anyway, so, so that, that was some of it. So that's, that's the IRC. Um, and then after that, um, we said, okay, well, this is a problem. Because if I want to, because I understand, like, yeah, maybe if I'm, you know, sharing child abuse, you know, I should go to jail. Yeah. But if I'm sharing, uh, you know, the, the, a song from the Beatles, you know, I mean, come on, give me a break, right? Okay. Uh, so there was something, so after that, we came up with, um, oh, I got one more thing to, to talk mm -hmm. about before that. After IRC and Net News came uh, one that was the file sharing without the chat. 
And it's something that we've all heard of. It's called Napster. Napster. Right. Um, and uh, so, so Napster was the, for people who don't know, this is 98, 99. Um, basically, it was people's exposure to uh, getting music over the internet. For free. Well, for free at the time. Yeah. But, but, but at the time, the only other way to get music was really over plastic discs, yeah. CDs, right, or cassettes. It was physical media, yeah. right? There wasn't really any online way to buy or license it. Well, there were a few, but they were very minor. Nobody yeah. used them, okay? So um, this was a big one where I'm like, oh, well, finally, I don't have to like walk into the record store and buy this $10 <laughs> CD, right? This is so much more convenient. And it was a big problem because um, the music industry were like, oh, these are just fraudsters. Like, no, no, they're, they're just people that see that this is a much better way of consuming music than having to go and like have a bunch of CDs that could scratch. You know, it's all in one place. You know, there's all these conveniences, right? And it wasn't until the iPod came around that really sort of the, 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 the mainstream caught the, on to that. People were still buying the DVDs and then recording right, them on their Right, right. So it took yeah. a while to get over. But, you know, it's Where all you digital. Buy it digital. Like, yeah. When was the last time you bought a CD? Digitally, now, right? yeah. yeah. So um, the, the Napster case, basically, the, the guy that founded it, uh, this is a centralized system. And um, it was uh, like Kazaa was a couple years uh, later. But, but uh, the, uh, Kazaa was based in a, like in a Cayman Islands, and so it was hard to get access to. Um, but because it was a centralized system, it means I could just remove a computer, and then Napster goes offline. It's gone, right? So, we, so we're going to go back to what we talked about beforehand, what we, what we saw with the, um, with the BBS networks and with the IRC networks. Now, the problem with both of those is that, yes, maybe there were um, 10 BBS uh, machines or 10 IRC networks connected to each other, but a large enough operation, somebody could go around and remove all the machines, right? You know, they, or maybe they'd all be in like, you know, two or three different, pla it, it, these days it's all centralized in yeah. Amazon, AWS, right? Yeah. And so they could do that. So somebody said, ah, but what if instead of Instead of connecting at that point, we're going to connect at the end user point, the you and me point. Yeah. Right? And, and, and that's when the peer-to-peer -peer file sharing came up. So that, that was BitTorrent, right? It was the most famous oh, yes. one. But before that, there was something called eDonkey, which is still around today. Uh, there, and there was Direct Connect, Nutella. Uh, and the interesting things about these is that uh, they have a couple properties. First of all, is there's a unique link there's a unique, uh, on, on BitTorrent, it's called a magnet link. And on eDonkey, it's called an ED2K link. It's this very large sort of hash of, of, of stuff. And once a file goes up there, then ostensibly, it has a unique identifier. So that means that it's up there forever, as long as there's somebody around that's offering it to share. Yeah. Right? And so then theoretically, it can't be taken down. Uh, in the same way that, like, oh, I don't know, um, because it has like a special name for it, right? It's it's a permanent link, and so even if you go around and you see ten people sharing them, you arrest them all, yeah. right? Then a week later, somebody who wasn't online at the time comes back online, and that's the same identifier, and then you got the problem open, yeah. right? So so that means that you can go on ED2K. And then you can see something, uh, if you, with some of these clients, they'll say like, you know, you, you, you type in a search term, I, I don't know, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And, then, and then you'll get all of the ED2K uh, files, blah, blah, blah. And then you can click uh, download on one. And it might say something like last seen incomplete hmm. in like 2008, <laughs> right? And so, so uh, the chances of you actually, and not only that, but um, it's distributed. And so some people have certain parts of it. It's kind of like the Monopoly game, yeah. right, from, from McDonald's or whatever, right? Is, is that you need to fill in the port and get all the puzzle pieces. Right. And so um, you might have a, f a file that sits there at 99% for a month or a year yeah. or never completes yeah. because nobody has that last remaining part to it, right? But because you have this insane persistence, um, that makes it kind of toxic if you know what I mean. Mm. Because that means that if I upload something in fraudulent or, or, or you know, illegal or whatever it is, uh, 16 years ago, 
then <laughs> there's no real way to, to then remove it. Be, so, so, you know, because that, that, that hash will always kind of be there. Yeah. For, you know, because what happens is that um, the, the peers then will download some of the databases of not the files themselves. Mm -hmm. We'll get to that part. That one's the sketchy part. But of the representations of the files, right? And so then when you do the uh, searching, it'll then bring up the representations of these files, right? And say, okay, yeah. well, this exists. We don't know where it is, but it exists somewhere, right? It's just a record of it, right? So yes, yes, I want that thing. And then you leave your computer on for two yeah. years. And <laughs> you might, might get it. Um, so, so that's what happened with um, uh, those. And BitTorrent's the same way, right? Is that I, I could, um, let's say, oh, I don't know. Uh, when you, when you look at it, you see uh, cedars and peers, right? Uh, whenever you go to a, and you want to have something with a high amount of cedars, because that's how you're going to get the, uh, this, the thing the fastest. So, if you'll, so uh, um, the main use for BitTorrent that I do is movies. And it's basically like, uh, I don't know, some obscure movie I want to watch. Yeah. Something like that. But, but from the ads in the site, I think the main use of it is pornography. <laughs> and, and I think it's adult pornography. I don't think it's child pornography. I think it's... it's pornography be, be, is always... Be, because the, the ads on the side are like boobies yeah. or whatever it is. Yeah. And, and, and also for books sometimes. Mm. If I want to read like a PDF or something. And, you know, it, it, I, I'll legitimately go out and buy it. But yeah. like if it says like $120, I'm like, I don't, wanna, I, don't, I don't know if I want it yet. Yeah. Like I want to see a preview of what I'm going to get, right? And of course, I'd rather have the book form, but they can like, uh, tell me. Mm. So... Th those are the kinds of use cases that I do. And it's some software. It's, it's actually used legitimately for software. So um, totally legitimate projects, like um, uh, in Linux projects, yeah. the, the Debian project, yeah. very legitimate project. When they put out a new release, they will say, well, we don't want you to, you know, we have to pay for our server costs, and we're a low budget operation. So they'll put up a torrent link so that people can then download from each other oh. in order to reduce the costs. Um, Wikimedia sometimes does that with like a, a database dumps or something. So, so you know, these not-for-profit groups that have a lot of data that they're trying to share, um, they, might, they might use BitTorrent for these purposes in order to reduce the costs so that, you know, and increase the download speed so they don't, yeah. you know, ev to everybody doesn't always go to one server, right? So, so that's... So that's that part, and uh, I know we haven't really gotten to the the the, um, the, the dark web the dark web yet. So, um, but all of this is setting up for what we're going get <laughs> to get to next. And so the next thing we're going to get to are three things called FreeNet, ZeroNet, and Tor. But uh, we'll Tor is the most famous one. We'll get to the last. But we're going to start with FreeNet and ZeroNet first. So, what FreeNet and ZeroNet both are is it's a way of posting up a website in a decentralized manner that can't be taken down. Mm. Now, essentially what happens is, before I know when we said like, um, you know, let, let's say that I put up a, uh, you know, a disgusting website of, of you know, uh, for photographs and movies or whatever, right? And then somebody could, could say, oh, well, you know, oh, we're going to remove that thing and we know who owns it and we're going to remove that thing and that's fine, right? Uh, on FreeNet, in the same way that I, uh, on, on eDonkey, I could put up a video. I could put up a website. Yeah. Ah. So that means that I put up a website of, of this content. And then um, I leave the building. I don't have to be there anymore. And now the website is being sh shared amongst all of the other people that participate in FreeNet. And so if you're going to sign up for Freenet, what you have to do is you have to allocate a certain amount of your disk so that you can be part of the collected database that goes across all of the users, right? So you allocate 20 gigabytes or whatever to it, right? And then as long as you're on Freenet, you are part of the sort of um, the, the giant computer system, which is distributed over all of the users. And, and that will support um, the content on the site yeah. or, or on the network, in the same way that we were talking about beforehand. So um, ZeroNet, which is a similar s technology, works in a very similar way to that. Uh, so, so essentially what will happen is that if you get FreeNet right now or ZeroNet, it'll say like, uh, and then if you click on something that you want to look at, uh, chances are you haven't downloaded it yet. And so mm -hmm. it'll try to download it and peer it and do stuff like yeah. that. But if you leave it on for a couple of days, eventually, it's going to start saying, well, I'm, I'm connected. I got these things like this. 
um, the guy that hasn't been using it, I'm going to start getting some other things because yeah. I have these, you know, I've got these 20 gigabytes of space. I've only used up five. Here, these other things need peering stuff too. I'm just going to do that and start filling it up. Right? Same thing that happens in zero net. Mm. Now, so that means that I could load up Freenet, do absolutely nothing, walk away from my computer one month, I come back, and then it has 20 gigabytes of this shared stuff yeah. of content that was designed to be never taken down and completely anonymized. Yeah. What kind of content do you think is that? That is definitely porn. It's definitely porn, <laughs> and it's a bunch of illegal content. Yeah. So here's the problem, is that if some, so we're going to, so we go back to the anonymization of users. Freenet doesn't have that at all. You can see the IP addresses of all these users, especially if you have Freenet running and your system's up for days or weeks, then I can easily find out who the person is because yeah. they haven't gone offline, right? And so, so a well-seeded Freenet or ZeroNet network, you know, especially if you're generous enough with the amount of content on it, um, and somebody walks away or doesn't even worry about it, they'll have a bunch of, of childhood porn on their machine that they don't even know about. Right. They could not have been at their computer for a month and they right? saw it. Yeah. And, and so here's, here's a really interesting part about all of that. Is that the, the, uh, because of that, I think, the Freenet's been around since about 2000. Mm -hmm. uh, for active users, um, it depends on what you're talking about. If you're talking about people who are, are on throughout the month or a day or a couple hours or whatever like that, um, it's somewhere between two or 5,000 people. Mm -hmm. Or, or computers. Yeah. And so this isn't a huge network. Again, we're going back to the BBSs, we're going back to the IRCs. You know, if you're going to, you know, the most busy IRC network is probably like 3,000 people, right? It's, it's not a lot of people. Yeah. Because, you know, um, there's just, it's, it's, this, this doesn't have the size of Facebook or these other things or NetNews or any of those other stuff, right? Um, Napster was the only one that went huge, right? But other than that, it's all really small. So um, you go, so the, so basically what, if you look at the free net, uh, all of the all of the allocated space amongst all of the computers is about 80 terabytes. Now, um, that's relatively small because I can go out and buy a 20 terabyte drive right yeah. now, right? Yeah. And so that's four of those. Um, and so so it's it's big, but when we're talking about a global network of mm. anybody can get on, it's, not that big. it's really not that big at all, right? It's pretty small. Yeah, and so. Um, basically, uh, w there's been a number of uh, people that have been picked up for running Freenet mm. and arrested on child porn charges. Now, some of, the, some of these charges are, are fairly interesting because there's this other thing here. Uh, let's see if I'm uh, here. Uh, is that we're going to go into, um, uh, uh, yeah. So there's this kind of porn out there called Lolly. Uh, and essentially what it is, is it's anime or uh, maybe or hentai, you know, and things like it's It's drawings depicting uh, uh, sexual acts. Yeah. And so, so Lolly is uh, reserved for, uh, I, 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 I have never looked up Lolly, I've only heard about it. Um, but I believe that it's, um, you know, girl and uh, there's always a girl involved and, I, I, uh, and they're depicted as underage, right? And they're all drawings, and it's, it's pornographic depictions. So this one, one person, uh, a couple years ago, was arrested in Utah for running Freenet. They took his computer. They looked in the cache of the distributed database of all of the images, right? Yeah. Of all of the content that he may or may not have looked at. It doesn't really matter. And then he found, uh, they found depictions of this lolly porn. Mm. And then they and then they um, uh, charged him with child porn. Um, and then he pleaded guilty, and they did a plea bargain. Yeah. And you see this rep repeat again and again and again. They'll find somebody with uh, three JPEGs, uh, you know, depicting uh, teenage boys yeah. or whatever, right? And then the person pleads guilty, and then uh, you know, and then you don't hear about it afterwards. So I'm curious about this thing since we know how the network works right mm. now, and you know that. By the nature of running that thing, you'll probably get that content on your computer somewhere. Um, the question is, do we have, and, and like, I've, I've, got a loom, I've got a loom foil right here. We can make some hats if you want to. Let me just, let me just kind, of, kind of do this for now. So here's my aluminum foil hat, all right? Well, okay. a conspiracy theory hat. 
the, the question is, is um, are these lazy police officers that, you know, their boss comes and says, why haven't you arrested anybody in the past? And they're like, oh, fine. And yeah. he says, let me just go on Freenet and find a couple losers and, and arrest them. Is it, um, well, here's the other thing, is that the other stuff that those, that those, uh, that those uh, networks do is they do truly illegal stuff. Like uh, people may be trying to sell narcotics or illegal weapon sales or things under the, the RICO laws, yeah. right, of organized crime. Right, drug smuggling, stuff like that. You know, th that's the real stuff, right? Or, or uh, m m maybe the the thing that the child pornography is designed to prevent, which is child sex trafficking, right? That's yeah, the real stuff, right? Yeah. And so the question is, like, um, is the porn like why is it always child porn? Why isn't it these other things? Which, if you spend enough time on there, you see this stuff's going on too. Like, I like I, yeah. I could go on uh, Silk Road and buy cocaine tomorrow, yeah. right? And get a bunch of it delivered with Bitcoin. So why, so I don't know whether it's a cover story or what it is, or maybe, maybe it's easier to prosecute, you know? That, that's the other thing I don't know, is that, yeah. that maybe like if, if, I, if, I, if I find somebody who's like smuggling drugs and they say, ah, yeah, but they're running free net mm. and drug smuggling only carries two, two years while child porn carries 20 years yeah. because we've been so sort of puritanical with our, with our laws there. And, and if I put them in front of uh, a jury of their peers, you know, nobody ever lets a child porn, yeah. you know, person go. But a drug smuggler, you know, maybe he can get off. So, so I, I don't know if they, if they gravitate to that place or what it is, because if you know, if you know the technical background, it's a kind of weak case. So, so, so it's, it's interesting. I haven't quite figured it out yet. Um, so that was that part. And so now we're going to get into Tor, which is essentially the... Um, I think I have two more. Yeah, no, I did that and did that. Okay, I'm almost done. Good, time's good. Is uh, Tor is the one where it, it tries to hide your identity, who you, who your IP address is. And oh, before I go into that thing, I, I'll go into one more thing. The the other interesting thing about Freenet and um, ZeroNet and eDonkey and all those other things is that uh, at one point you could argue on eDonkey is that you have grandma sharing MP3s, right? Mm. Back in the early days, that was true. But now yeah. you can't because grandma's uh, on, on iTunes, right? Yeah. So um, even though people think that they're uh, uh, secret and hidden, it's kind of like somebody wearing the bank robber mask and, you know, and, and, and a striped shirt and saying, ah, you know, uh, I, uh, nobody can see me, I, you know, and you're like, well, well, sure, but you're the only guy with like a big bag with the money right, sign on the it, dollar sign, no right? Yeah. And and so like, e even if this is super secure, the the, the thing is is that like, um, when you're on free net, like, you any sort of a qualified person can tell mm. that you're on it, and they can say, well, you know, nobody does anything legal on there, yeah, you know, well. You know, well, I mean, maybe researchers. Yeah. Like but you know, I, I, like when I was doing this, I was on there. But like, yeah. but, but the reality is, is that it's people that are on it, let's say, uh, for days and days and days, right? Yeah. Even if I don't know exactly what you're looking at, you know, there's nothing good on there. Yeah. So you can just sort of, as a pretext, go and find a person and like, oh, you work for the FBI, never mind, or, yeah. or, or, you know, somebody. Like, so, so that's the problem with zero net or free net is that you can't hide amongst a large swath of legitimate right. users, right? So everybody there is probably crooked or 90 something percent of it, yeah. right? You don't really have an alibi. It's, it's, it's like, uh, if I want to do something illegal, I can make my Wi-Fi open, yeah. right? And then that gives me an alibi saying, oh no, no, I think it was my neighbor that did that, right? Yeah. Or whatever it is. And the question is, you know, does that lead back to what we talked about before, the secondary liability? And the answer is no, not with open Wi-Fi. That was, there was never a case for that. Um, and so, you know, you want, to, you want to hide within the crowd in order to avoid the secondary liability, in order to avoid the, 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 the direct uh, accusation. So we come to something called Tor. And what Tor does is it allows you to go through a bunch of other machines until you get maybe something like this. Until you get, so, so basically, uh, normally what would happen is that I would talk from here down to here, right? And, and that would be one connection. But with Tor, I'd be going through all these other things like this in order to get over there. 
and those are the other people on the Tor network. It becomes a huge Rube Goldberg sort of uh, a mess of yeah. cables and wires, wherein um, in order to find out who I am, you have to hunt down each of those individual people who, and then you'd have to see, well, who connected to that computer at that time, of a, but those logs aren't being kept. Yeah. You see. And so people use that thing in order to do uh, pro-democracy stuff, in order to do, uh, let's say, uh, reporting in, in, uh, in, in China. In China. Uh, uh, Julian Assange used it for WikiLeaks. Um, it's done for very legitimate yeah. things. That's how, that's how the, um, the Arab Spring, yeah. how, how some of the content could get out of there. And so, so Tor is done very, uh, uh, pretty legitimately. Uh, but it has its own um, network uh, ver version of the Freenet thing. But that's not what it was beforehand. You don't have a distributed database. That's not there. So you're not going to get <laughs> innocuously hit child porn by leaving Tor right. on. Um, the, the, it's somebody running that under an anonymized thing. It's still a server thing. So those machines can go down, right? And so, so the Tor links die all yeah. the time as somebody decides to not run anymore. They think it's too risky because, um, you know, a, a lot of it is, uh, uh, you know, illegal content, whatever it is. Um, but it's pretty secure. The, when, uh, the Silk Road guy, which was the guy th that did the, the initial... Um, the, the initial sort of tour uh, eBay back yeah. in the day, uh, they found him through traditional uh, police reporting. Mm. So it was stuff like, you know, he, he would say like, oh, it's a sunny day today or mm. something like that. And then he'd go and we look up like where, where it was sunny or something like that. You know, yeah. he'd say, oh, it's rainy or, mm -hmm. you know, and, 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 you know, they pieced together traditional things and then they figured out where he lived based yeah. on those things. But it wasn't based on any technical flaw in, in the systems. And they eventually hunted him down in San, San Francisco. Yeah. So, um, that's, so, so that's, uh, that's Tor. Um, and it falls under the same issues, is that although there are you know, uh, award-winning international reporters using it, for the most part, it's just criminals. Yeah, right. And it's not criminals doing porno necessarily, but it's criminals that are trying to do phishing attacks, trying to log into a bank, with, with, with stolen credentials that don't want to be traced. Yeah. You know, it's, it's people that, that, you know, don't want to, I don't know, that they're doing a hack of some computer somewhere or, or whatever it is, right? You know, that's, that, that's where you do that. And, and on top of Tor, uh, they have a, a super secure encrypted protocol, which you can run IRC on. <laughs> Back to our, our thing over here. They have their own networks. Yes, what's, because we talked about the problem with IRC is that all the IP addresses and everything was being, was being exposed and you can just go yeah. and bust everybody in the, in, in the Lolly channel. You can't anymore if you're on the IRC with Tor. No. See? Into dark, so Hence that's the dark web. Yeah, we're getting close now. Tor also has something called the .onion sites that you can go to. Ah, all right. So we're going to go over here to, um, no, I did all of that. Uh, Things changed around uh, last year or so with all of this QAnon, hmm. or a couple years ago nonsense, is that all of a sudden, uh, uh, the conspiracy, well, first of all, uh, uh, Tor at one point, and all of these others, Freenet, ZeroNet, all of them, you basically had, uh, let, me, let me do the lay of the land. Hmm. You would have uh, people that were like sort of crazy, just, just crazies. You know, conspiracy yeah. theory, people that think that, like, I don't know, like, uh, the, the FBI is, like, you know, in their toilet bowl. And then you had uh, libertarians, extreme sort of, you know, they, they don't want the government in anywhere. Yeah. Then you had uh, criminals, some sort. You had uh, perverts. And in um, other societies, you might have uh, a democracy or, or female yeah. rights activists or something like that, you know, in, in more restricted societies. Um, may, maybe there's a form of, uh, of that over here that I can't th that, that you know, or, or I can't think of that mm -hmm. um, maybe maybe yeah. there's, maybe there's a legitimate thing that's not legal. Um, so around two or so years ago, uh, that was flooded out on a lot of the networks by the QAnon and right wingers. The same people back to the very first thing yeah. here that were on the secret BBSs back in the day is a white nationalist and a terrorist and stuff like that. Mm. And they ended up starting to use uh, a tour about yeah. two years ago. And they kicked off all of the child porn people 
because that's the worst, you know. And so it's a good so, way to get caught. Is so they cleaned point. up yeah. all of those networks because along with that, they want to have like strict Christian values. <laughs> so now, so now what you have is you have, uh, so now it's just purely libertarian mm -hmm. stuff. So you have drugs sometimes, weapons a lot, yeah. you know, uh, and conspiracy theories up the wazoo, yeah. and, and people meeting and talking about, you know, killing senators. Yeah. And, you know, and a lot of, and some of these uh, groups that were um, at, at, at the Capitol on January 6th, the ones that knew what they were doing, they had, uh, they had tour websites that they would go on, and they, there's, there's separate social networks that are all on tour that you can go on. And so you can log in, you can go and you can look at this, and, it's just, and it makes Gab and Parlor look normal. <laughs> I mean, because on Gab and Parlor, you still yeah. can't say, I want to kill Joe Biden. Yeah. But here you can say, here is how I'm going to kill Joe Biden. Here's my plan to do so. And People are fine with that. Well, they can't tell who you are. <laughs> you can't be found. Yeah. Right? Um, and there's another place that used to be like that, and that, and this place has been taken offline repeatedly, which is we have to go talk talk about the chans. So um, the four chan and eight chan. What they are is they're uh, posting boards based on something called two chan. A, a, a Japanese guy made it in about 2000, and essentially what happens is that uh, everything there lasts for uh, just moments, almost. Mm. Ma maybe maybe uh, an hour, maybe a, a few hours. Yeah. But uh, it, if you go to a popular one and you read the threads and you click refresh, it's all gone. And it makes it extremely, and uh, uh, it's replaced with something new, right? Yeah. So it makes it a very addictive kind of thing because you can comment and participate, and as long as you're commenting and participate, and participating, and you have these permanent links, then those will survive a little bit longer. But eventually, those will go away as well. So it's this, it's this kind of network where um, there is no permanence, and things disappear. And so when you hear that they say, "Oh, you know, um, the shooter posted his video on 4chan." Right? That's why they did it, because only the people that are on it right at that moment or maybe a few minutes afterwards yeah. that will see it, because eventually it's going to fall off the cliff and be gone. And right? As soon as the press starts looking for it, it's gone anyway. So. Right, and so people have to then, so there's a lot of efforts to try and try to log everything down and store yeah. everything from it so they see the, <laughs> but, but you know, this is how it works. And so the question is, is that like, are these illegal? Um, Maybe, maybe not. The guy that runs, uh, the guy that ran 8chan, which is the modern version, yeah. he lives in the Philippines. Oh, uh, so he's not even American. Uh, right, and they're doing it off. But there, there's, a, there's a lot of pieces here. And so um, the servers are in Russia, hmm. right? He's in the Philippines. And then uh, when you type in, you know, this one, Akun, Akun.net into the browser, right? Like, um, that is a, called a domain name service, like GoDaddy, right? Mm. And so you have to worry about that. As well. So like all of these things, you have to, like if any of them pull the plug on you, you're out, right? So you can still have the servers up. I can still be here. But if somebody, the, if the person who, the with GoDaddy yeah. said, you know, no, we're not going to do it anymore, you're, you're done, right? So then you'd have to move it around. And it's a pain in the neck, which is why uh, people would want to do these other services over here, yeah. which are okay, but... You're going to not be able to get that large reach that you used to be yeah. able to, and so there's a fight right now because uh, you have Gab, Parler, and all these other things who are now being kicked out of platforming, and the only place for them to run is here, this place, right, the dark web. And so there's going to be a huge growth of the dark web in the next sort of four years. Yeah, in the next couple of years, as as all these as all these boomers start to figure out how to use Tor. And get kicked off of... And get kicked off of Twitter everything and everything else, like yeah. that. And so it's going gonna, it's gonna to be interesting to see what happens because, um, you know, these things, they don't... 
you go to a tour site, they don't really have cookies, mm -hmm. they don't have JavaScript, they don't have ads, they don't have yeah. any of those things, but all those things can be related uh, they don't, uh, uh -huh. to, to tracking, yeah. to ways of following you around. And so they say, no, we don't want to do any of that stuff. But maybe they'll figure out a way to do it because you know, they all want to make money. They're all grifters at the end of the day. Yeah. It's, it's not like um, you know, the people that trade uh, child porn or something. Um, you know, they're just trying to uh, pleasure themselves. They're not necessarily yeah. trying to make money from it. Um, and so this is a completely new, or, or, you know, or the people that are trying to, I don't know, uh, uh, do um, the, the sales of, of, uh, of illegal weapons, yeah. right? They're making money on the top, right, uh, as, a, as a service charge. Mm. So th that, that's it, like the credit cards are, right? Yeah. So that's where they make their cash. And so the kind of advertise, so the, so the data mining that Google and Facebook does is kind of a big no-no. Because you know you, is that you're not supposed to mine people's data on these types of networks. Yeah. So it's going to be interesting to see how how that plays out in the next. Who's paying for it? If they can't have advertising. Oh, it's it's it's, it's just uh, largesse. Yeah. Right. It's it's somebody running a server somewhere. Well, again, like yeah. I I could start up uh, in in a f in a few minutes, like in, if I got out my laptop mm. under ten minutes, I I could get a server up running for five dollars a month. Yeah. Right, and that, you know, that's fine. But do I want to be paying that those people five dollars a month, and then potentially have all of this legal liability on me? Yeah, I don't know. I, it, it it gets sketch, right? And so um, there's still there's still a risk in the back of anybody's mind that's doing this thing. Mm. Is that you know is is it worth all of the all of the issues? Yeah. So yeah, um, I think that's a nice crash course in the, in the dark net. Um, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, the one thing I didn't mention is that Tor has about three hundred thousand U.S. users at any given moment. How, how many does uh, Tor has three hundred thousand, and Facebook has a billion, and Twitter has a billion? Right. But but yeah. I, I could. But arresting five thousand global users for yeah. Freenet. Yeah. Versus three hundred thousand in the U.S. Mm. Like you can't you can't go out and do that. Can't you can't bust. That. Right. Yeah. That, not only that, but um, that means that I could go through so many, like, you can hide yourself really mm -hmm. well with Tor. Like, that, that's real. Mm -hmm. And I would probably think that the, that the primary use of it now is for organized crime yeah. at this moment in time. Yeah. It's, it's people that have stolen. More, more than white supremacists? I would say that the white supremacists and the right wingers are number two. Yeah. And then probably the, um, the people that are doing narcotics, yeah, and other types of you know, uh, or or weapons is number yeah. three. And then you have the pornographers yeah. uh, on the bottom, but they are um, because not all pornography is illegal. Not not all pornography is illegal, and um, the, it's just becoming so vast mm. that I I don't think that um, we go back to what we called the uh, the deep web, mm. which are things that you can only access invisible by searching, right? And so as, let's say, a, a porno website ends up with, uh, let's say one of these big tube sites, you know, yeah. like, like RedTube or whatever, and they're not like, beforehand when we were talking about how the entire free net is 70 terabytes, I, I have no idea what they have, but they probably have servers and servers yeah. and thousands and thousands and thousands of terabytes, right? Mm. And it's probably easier to hide child porn in there. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I would bet that that's where most of that content is, mm. is in legitimate sites, maybe a couple search terms if you knew what you were yeah. looking for, yeah, yeah. and you need to type in the right words, and then it pops up, right? Yeah. But like, you know, if you look at the volume that they're dealing with, you know, like uh, 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 multiple uploads are uploaded a minute, mm. you know, and there's no way, there's no way that they can yeah. monitor that stuff. They just have to sort of trust people that they're doing the right thing. Mm. Right, and then take things down as needed or flag yeah. stuff accordingly. So that's probably where that stuff is being done. Um, and these other things are just sort of um, stupid people. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I, I think that that's it. There, there's yeah, your, there's you, the do, you know, do you know how the dark web works now? Now, I, now I'm uh, familiar yeah. with the dark web and I'll be going on it later. <laughs> <laughs> I'll show you Get somebody you. whacked. <laughs> right, well, that's it. All right, thank you. Let's see how we do this thing.